So one area where evolution's been applied, I think, quite productively in medicine is to try to better understand cancer. Can you summarize some of the main ways that evolution is useful for understanding cancer? There are really two main ways. One is to use uh, evolutionary biology's ability to reconstruct history and relationship to build evolutionary trees of cancers that occur inside a single patient's body. And the so the evolution of the cancer within the individual? Within the individual, right. So this is all happening in the lifespan of a and, and in a particular tumor even sometimes. Well, the reconstruction of the history is done by looking at the metastases. So a cancer can spread through a body and the doctor can recover samples from five, six, ten places in the body. And then you can use the genetic differences between those different metastatic tumors in the body to reconstruct how long ago they were all in the same cell. And that gives you an estimate of how long the cancer has been in the, in the body of the patient. When this was done for pancreatic cancer, uh, the surprise came by realizing that the cancer had started 18 years before it was diagnosed. Mm. Usually the period from diagnosis to death with pancreatic cancer is short. It's on the order of six months to a year. And this opened up the window of time during which one might have a chance of preventing it. That's fascinating. You know, Steve Frank has a whole book about evolution in cancer, and one of the main themes seems to me to be the opportunity to look back, way back in the development of the individual to the original mutations that created vulnerability on certain tissues. That's right, um, and one of the lessons of that kind of analysis and that kind of thinking is that most cancers actually start very early in life. Yeah. But you don't notice them, and probably they wouldn't do any harm unless they get out of control. That's right. Actually, they're already out of control, but they grow so slowly or they're controlled by the cells around them. What's going on that makes some go bad and others just sit there? Well, you need somewhere between seven and nine different mutations usually for a cell to slip out of control and become a cancer. And so when we say that a cancer started very early in life, we mean that, well, he got one or two of those mutations. It started down that path. And it didn't become fully capable as a cancer cell until it had acquired a succession of another, say, seven mutations or so. So, so this sounds like it might have big implications for how we treat cancer, too. Well, if we could understand, in general, what sorts of signals those early cells were giving off, uh, we would be able to head cancer off at the pass. So we could identify this person has pancreatic cancer, it might be just a few cells, and maybe we can do something that interacts with what's special about those cells to knock them off. That's Is right. that the strategy? That would be the strategy. And our immune system's already doing that to some degree. It is, and one of the clever things about cancer cells is that they, one of the first mutations they often get is one that teaches them how to ignore what the immune system is telling them to do. Really? Yeah. The immune system waltzes up to them in the form of a T cell and says, you're damaged. You should commit suicide. And the cancer cell, unlike a normal cell, says, buzz off. I'm going to divide and make more of me. Go away. So normal cells have a system so that when they recognize they're part of a tumor or malignant, they knock themselves off. That's right. Well, they will receive a signal from the immune system saying, we have detected that you are damaged and you need to commit suicide. And they say, oh, for the greater good of the whole organism, I will die. There's a good name for that, which is technical, but worth saying. Apoptosis. 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 So apoptosis means cells have a built-in mechanism for offing themselves when they're infected or malignant or other bad things. Right. Cell biologists often say that every cell wakes up in the morning thinking about committing suicide and has to be talked down by its friend. <laughs> and sadly, in this case, failure to obey those signals... Kills the organism. Yeah, that's pretty serious. Yeah. 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 So, that's so all of these cells are cooperating. I mean, essentially, all the cells in our body start off genetically identical or pretty close to it. Yeah. Therefore, they can cooperate. And these rogue lines of cells are really going off on their own. That's right, and it's because they're genetically different, because they have mutations in them right. that make them different. Now, the other very interesting thing about cancer is that every cancer consists of a set of competing clones. A clone is a set of cells that are genetically identical. And the, each clone is different from each other clone because it's had different mutations. And they compete with each other for space, they compete with each other for nutrients, for oxygen, uh, and that result... So all the cells in a cancer are not the same? Not, not by no means the same. In fact, cancers are a geneticists' nightmare. They are so genetically diverse. I mean, partly because they have mutations that induce more mutations. That's right. In fact, they get one kind of mutation that induces another technical term called chromothripsis, which means 
that the chromosomes are shattered mm. and you pick up a cancer cell and instead of having the usual number of uh, chromosomes that humans have, it will have 500 or 1,000 little chromosome fragments. So when I was taught to look under a microscope and identify malignant mm -hmm. cells, this is part of what we saw. Yep, yep. Okay. So these clones are competing with each other. Now, imagine that you try to cure the cancer by giving a strong dose of chemotherapy. And one of the clones is able to resist it, but the others aren't. What you're doing is you're killing off the competition for the resistant clone. So you open up wide, rich fields for it to grow faster. For it to grow faster. And if you think about the normal course of treatment of a cancer patient, they come in, they often have surgery, but it's followed by chemotherapy. And for a little while, they look like they're okay. The chemotherapy has really knocked down many of the, can of the clones. But if there is just one clone that survives, within three to six months, the cancer will reemerge and the same process will be repeated. There are only so many drugs in our arsenal for treating cancer. You do this three or four times and you run out of drugs. And at that point, there's nothing left to control.